I think over the 12 months coming, we're going to see a continuation of the trend of the increasing power of the patient in medical decisions and the increasing emphasis on patient empowerment. So I think as a result of that, we're going to see the pharma industry trying to get closer to the patients and trying to involve them in producing the data that they need to get their drugs and drugs and other devices on the market. So the kind of data that they'll be looking for is to help better understand the disease, the disease pathway, the unmet need and the benefit risk balance of any intervention. This for me is, is, is very much related to, to stress and strain theory. And if you have a look at the healthcare budgets themselves, they are pretty inelastic. Um, if anything, they're reducing rather than, uh, than increasing. So what this means is they need to be able to manage the external stresses that are applied to them. They need to be able to manage the additional request for healthcare services, whether it's because people have less money and they want more access to, to, the, to the public healthcare fund, whether it's because um, people are getting older and they still need to have more complex and more expensive treatments, or whether it's from industry who are offering more and frequent uh, expensive treatments as well. And, and there's only so much that the healthcare budget can, can manage before uh, it needs to react in some particular way. Germany and the UK um, are losing their free market uh, opportunity for pricing in the way you want. Uh, Germany's already uh, put this into place with the uh, AMNOG uh, law and they're going to make it stricter. So that's going to put a lot more pressure on companies. Uh, some are already saying they won't launch in uh, Germany because they don't accept the way that the uh, process has been put into place. Value-based pricing has been spoken about as being a new program for the UK. More frequent and more rigorous cost-benefit analyses of, of different products that come through. More frequent um, reference pricing, actually more reference pricing and then more frequent reference pricing, which obviously has a, an impact across the globe when you look at the international perspective. Certainly the increasing use of generics and also the increasing use of biosimilars as well as they, they look to try to, to reduce their spend. And also restrictions on access whether it's actually not providing access at all, or whether it's looking at restricting access to certain patient populations, maybe step editing certain products. Might be restrictions in price, where certain types of innovative agreements, risk sharing uh, needs, needs to be considered. Or it might actually be looking to delay access to the marketplace as healthcare, um, as, as governments are trying to manage and stem the flow of funds that are actually going through to industry. Also, if we look at the other area uh, that's used by a lot of countries, and that is cross-referencing uh, the price in different countries, uh, they're talking about putting lower cost countries into their basket of countries that they look at, and that will reduce costs of the product However, it may compromise um, themselves as to whether industry will launch in those countries in the short term. They may leave them uh, until much later on. Now, what this means for the pharmaceutical industry, we've already started to see it, and I'm sure that we'll see it a lot more, is that they're turning their focus on, on countries where the budgets are perhaps a bit more flexible. Some of the emerging markets, some of the middle income patient segments that, that have more disposable income. But essentially, that, that's still a minor proportion of the, the global healthcare budget. So really what pharmaceutical industries need to be doing is they need to be looking holistically. They need to be understanding how can we work more efficiently, how can we work more effectively to be able to manage the, the current environment.